Now you'd assume we have to have full body tracking and foot tracking to have a football or soccer game, as it's called here. But VRFS is a free football soccer simulator that uses the controller sticks to move, but then your hands acting as the feet to kick the ball. Using realistic physics based off of how you're moving those controllers as to what part of your foot hits the ball, how hard you hit it, what direction you hit it. People are saying this is actually a really good simulator. It is very new, so it does still have a few bugs, but it's got a nearly four and a half star rating already for something that just released this month with people saying awesome amazing they're very excited to see the future of it and the developer responding to comments already if you're into soccer or football <laughs> this is something to check out monkey see monkey doo doo has been in closed beta and is now available for the public to download for free at first glance this might look similar to gorilla tag but this is a very different kind of game that pits you and your friends as monkeys racing against each other to try and collect bananas whether you're climbing up and jumping off of trees swinging on vines bouncing off of lily pads and trying not to get eaten by the crocodile, it's a very fast paced game that then has rewards that you can use to buy new cosmetics, you can customize your monkey, and in the lobby you can have a whole bunch of players hanging out together just having fun and then going into matches with up to six people total racing to get the first bananas. With a nearly perfect rating, Maestro the Masterclass is a free simulator that will make you a conductor of an orchestra. Utilizing actual hand tracking it says to use just your hands or even grab a chop stick to get the real motion down this is going to put you on the podium and make you an orchestra conductor surprisingly with 226 ratings this has zero one two or even three stars people giving all kinds of props to the developers in here saying that even if this was paid and they knew about it, they would gladly pay for this also people citing in reviews that the hand tracking works surprisingly well in this rated e for everyone this might also even be a good simulator if you are afraid of crowds to then stand on a stage turn around and see a virtual crowd it's a thought gun raiders is a free to play VR shooter and now when I hear free to play I always get a little nervous but this does have purchases for cosmetics in the game if you want to purchase them with tons of different game modes between a new battle royale assault control and a bunch of others this game has high flying combat action that has you flying all over the map there's climbing mechanics tons of different guns that you go through and of course the good and the bad that comes with any VR multiplayer shooter experience. The game has a 4.1 rating with most of the lower reviews citing community issues, report buttons not necessarily working when there was a toxic player. Blast On is described as a fast paced PvP shooter. It has you dueling against another person in a slow motion bullet hell type game. This game requires some play space for sure. You are physically trying to dodge all the attacks that your opponent is shooting or throwing at you and they've even recently added a mixed reality mode so you can see that play space around you and help give you more space and room to play. With a 4.5 rating, a very high rating, there is some people giving it lower ratings because they were upset that they originally paid for the game and then it went free after and they gave them currency in the game or something to make up for that. Other people saying that it's had some glitches and issues that have caused problems in the game. Piano Vision is an augmented reality app designed to help teach you to play the piano. You actually see your physical hands and keyboard through the cameras on your Quest 2 and your keyboard keyboard can even potentially be connected directly to the Quest 2 headset through a USB cable. Compared in the reviews to other keyboard apps like Virtuous on the Quest 2, many people have said that this is actually the best app for learning to play the piano or keyboard. Gorilla Tag we've talked about a lot of times before. It is a game where you are a gorilla with only hands, no legs, but you use your controllers as those gorilla fists. You pound into the ground and those physics in the game will then push you up off the ground. You learn to push yourself around using only your hands, bounce around, climb up walls and ultimately try to tag your friends and win the game. This game is used for a lot more now than just that. There are people that hang out in it, use it like a social app, and maybe people who put their kids in it just to let them grow up somewhere where they don't have to deal with them. Fire Zone looks to be a very ambitious multiplayer shooter that puts you actually in a war with up to 16 people. Looking like something like Battlefield, but for VR, talks about you have vehicles that you can play in. There are AI bots to add to fill out your roster. And although this only came out in December, it has over a four star rating with 82 ratings. People saying that recently though, it is pretty dead. People have either overlooked this game or forgotten that it's out, which means that if you have a lot of friends that have Quest 2s, this could be the perfect opportunity to get in and just play a multiplayer shooter with your friends and not have to worry about the toxic elements that we talk about in other VR multiplayer shooters. Luna Episode 1 Left Behind is one of the highest rated experiences on App Lab with nearly a five star rating. This is Episode 1. It is broken into five chapters and only Chapter 1 
one is free, but to unlock all four other chapters, all you have to pay one time is $2, but you can try out the first chapter completely free. It is a cinematic experience where you are playing a drone in a post-apocalyptic world, trying to help Luna, this girl, escape and stay safe. And it uses voice recognition. You actually talk to this character. You make different choices in this that will make the game play out in different ways. We had the developer recently on the, our podcast and interviewed them, and they said they were really trying to make something in VR similar to like a Telltale's Walking Dead kind of game. Ratings for this game are really good, and the only reviews that I could find that were any lower were because the game sometimes glitches. The developer assured us this month they were getting patches out to fix those glitches. And I will say, personally, this is one of the few VR experiences that made me get really emotional. T for God is another suggestion from the comments that came up because this is a truly unique VR game. Procedural generation allows you to use your physical play space you've set up at home to continue the game going only using your own in-game locomotion. You walking around the room, it changes the environment around you either by adding elevators, hallways, and it keeps you walking in your own play space but exploring this large world. Although this game has been out for a while now, it's still not that well known with only 362 ratings, 87% of them are five star. People say it is super well executed, one of the best VR games, and others saying that people don't have enough play space. It sounds like it is important to have at least some play space to make this more of an immersive experience. Gym Class Basketball VR has nearly a five star rating. Gym Class calls itself the top VR basketball simulator, known for its fitness benefits, the fact that it's free, and the fact that you can play multiplayer games with your friends. It even has dunking in it. Now there is a free version and there is a premium version, which you can actually have your own private courts. You can personalize your avatar, but even the free version still includes multiplayer modes, bot modes, matchmaking. Definitely worth checking out while it's free. Elixir is a free game that is meant to show off the hand tracking abilities of the Oculus Quest and the Quest 2. It is a short experience, although if you haven't gotten to experience much with hand tracking yet, it is probably one of the better showcases on the quest for it. The game drops you into a fantasy world as a sorcerer's apprentice, learning to help the sorcerer through all kinds of different tasks that you're going to need both of your hands in hand tracking to do. This is one of the lower rated apps with a 3.5 rating, mostly due to its short length that people mention in the reviews. Pavlov Shack is a VR multiplayer shooter. It is still considered to be in beta, yet it is completely free because of that. It is probably one of the most complete VR shooters you will find on the quest, let alone for free. With all kinds of different game modes from capture the points, gun game, zombies, there's a predator style mode, the hide. This is a game that you could potentially spend hundreds or even thousands of hours if you find the right friend group and really have a fun time playing this with them. Of course, the fact that it is free, it is a VR online multiplayer shooter, you are risking running into some community members that may not be the kind you want to deal with, of course, toxic communities, and that does reflect in the ratings, although the game still has a four and a half star rating it's because this game is well known, well loved, and it's still free for now, although they've claimed when it does go to the full story, it will cost. So that may mean the clock is running out on how much longer this one's free. Poker Stars VR is a free to play, basically casino simulator, allowing you to go in with your friends and play card games, hang out in these casino style settings. It is considered rated mature 17 and up only. This game was considered a very popular game for quite a while on the Quest 2 with over 17,000 ratings. I will say, disclaimer, from someone who's played this game, you really need to be someone who enjoys card games or enjoys that casino to actually enjoy this game. So I wouldn't recommend and try this unless you are into that. The Ancient Dungeon Beta is a roguelite dungeon crawler. Strangely compared a lot to the older Zelda games, although most people say that's probably only because you can cut the grass and you can pick up and break the pots around you. This game takes you through all kinds of dungeons and has real physics. When you swing your swords and hit an enemy, you see them get knocked back, throw knives, shoot arrows, and try to uncover everything you can find in these dungeons. Rec Room VR is one of the most popular social apps on all VR headsets, especially the Quest. Rec Room is free, and it cross plays between VR headsets, flat gaming consoles, and even phones. Rec Room is basically a miniature metaverse. There are social lobbies where you can hang out. People can build all kinds of different games, rooms, places to relax. There is probably millions of rooms by now on Rec Room, but there is also the core gameplay, which includes a Rec Royale, Battle Royale game, paintball, laser tag, 
all these different games that you can meet people in these social lobbies and then go play with them in actual games. VR Chat is the other and probably even more popular known social platform in virtual reality. VR Chat is primarily a place to hang out and meet people, but people have design rooms that are games that you can hang out in, murder mysteries, places to explore, and other fun things to do together in VR Chat. There is so much that people have created in VR Chat that it is something you can even go in solo, make private rooms, and just go check out all kinds of different things. There is places where you can go undersea diving, you can go fly a spaceship. There is so many different things to do in VR chat. Polar Dread is a FNAF style fan game that puts you in a winter themed resort trying to escape a massive mechanical bear. Although in this one you can throw objects, fight back, or even throw some of the enemies themselves, but you're closing doors, vents, and you're trying to let the clock strike six so that you can survive. 218 ratings give this a nearly five star rating. People say it's scary, people say it's really scary, and some people say it's not scary enough and give it a lower review score. Definitely Definitely a game that looks like a labor of love from a Five Nights at Freddy's fan, but something to check out if you're into the horror side of things. No Clip VR gets compared to a proper back rooms VR style game. Claims it is a fantasy violence with mild blood, yet it is repeatedly called a full on horror game. It uses a unique locomotion style where you have to move your arms to explore humongous spaces. There's different puzzles, entities you're trying to escape from, and it warns if you're not careful and no clip out of reality in the wrong areas, you're going to end up in the back rooms millions of square feet of backrooms to try and get out of. This game has about a 4.7 rating and most any review that isn't a five star seems to be all of their older reviews with some people saying they want to see more levels, more added to the game. It seems like everyone who's had the game work fine gives it a five star rating, which is really impressive. The game uses proximity chat so you may find other people in the backrooms, although they're so vast you may not run into anybody. Definitely worth checking out. Cat may be a game you've never heard of because one, it's really hard to search for a game named just cat. This is a cat in the hat horror game. Now, if you look at it, it really looks like a Slender Man clone style game. You're out in the woods, you are looking for six items, and then you have to banish the cat back into its box. The more items you find, the faster the cat gets. Now, with about a 4.5 rating, this one is mostly positive, 75% five stars and 16% four stars, with some of the lower reviews citing either it was too scary or not scary enough. It takes me back to the days of playing Slender Man on the iPad, though, just looking at this game. There's links to all the games in the description if you have any trouble finding it to make it easy for you to find. Solicitude Wake Up has you awakening in an abandoned research facility lying down on an operating table. You have to find your way out of the facility, you hear voices, you find monsters around every corner, and you only have a flashlight that has a limited amount of battery. You're searching this facility trying to find more batteries to keep that flashlight working, and then you are trying to find key cards to get through this. Now this has a 4 star rating with only 16 ratings. This seems to be a game that is not very well known. but some of the reviews are extremely positive, saying it's really scary, it's really good. Others citing that it's just too dark. It needs a little bit more brightness to be able to see what you're doing, and there needs to be some other mechanics added to where maybe your flashlight recharges some when you die, because if you die and your flashlight's low and you can't make it to find another battery, you're basically effed. Hordes is a VR wave shooter game that has you fighting witches, goblins, vampires, and other scary monsters, and it definitely has one of the lower ratings on the game list, although many times they specify this is a game in development and lots more features are being added as it's developed. You fight using magic wands and they've added newer melee modes that they advertise can even give you a workout with over 80 levels of VR horror. Don't Upset Bobby is a puzzle horror game where you are tasked with three different puzzles that you are trying to quickly finish before Bobby, the scary monster in the room, gets upset with you. Not a very well known game, this has only got 17 ratings so far with about a 3.8 rating. People saying that it is really scary, it is really fun. And the only negative review that's left said it was too long to load. The vision you see of Bobby here reminds me of a terrifying Garfield Halloween special I saw as a very young child on some very old VHS tape that was in my house. This one looks like that would take me back to that. It might be a little scary. Often called a free version of Blade and Sorcery, Battle Talent is a game everyone should try. With a 4.6 rating, this is a combat simulator, physics-based roguelite action game 
that people say really fills that combat fantasy niche. With 81% five-star reviews and only 4% one-star reviews, I had to go through pages and pages of reviews to even find a one-star review, and typically they were just citing some sort of bug that had temporarily broken the game for them. This game is rated mature 17 and up due to violence and blood, similar of course to Blade and Sorcery, and there's even character classes to choose to build your character the way you want to play the game. From the developers of one of my favorite VR games, Demio, comes Bait, a free-to-play fishing simulator. This is a multiplayer game where you can get with up to four of your friends, fish in the same pond together, hanging out, having fun. They've added multiple different locations that you can go fish since this game has come out. You even customize your reel, your rod, your bobbers, and you can actually play using your customized meta avatar if you've taken the time to make one that really looks like you. This game has a four-star rating and a higher number of one-star ratings at 11%, often citing either now because it's free to play, a lot of foul-mouthed kids in the lobbies, more toxic community members out there, or some people saying the content has just rolled out too slowly for the game. Although recently they just added a virtual social hangout here for up to 12 people. You can even do other things like toss a beach ball around, skip stones, there's even some RC boat racing. Bogo is a VR pet that will actually scale to your room scale that you have built and allow you to take care of this little cute pet, even compared to a Tamagotchi for 2022 in one review. If you have any idea what a Tamagotchi is, I barely remember those. With a 4.2 star rating, a lot of the reviews are extremely positive, saying it's very cute. They really like hanging out with Bogo, but some of the lower reviews citing that it's more of an experience. There's not enough interaction option with Bogo, but it's cute. It's free. If you are someone like me who likes the idea of a virtual pet but hates the games they die in, doesn't seem like there's too much risk of that with Bogo. At first glance, Hybo might look like Fortnite or Pop One in VR, but this game is considered a competitive first-person shooter VR game with a flying system that is incorporated into your bow that allows you to move around the map quickly, trying to take down your enemies. With a lot of positive reviews, people saying this is a game you absolutely have to experience in VR. I've had it recommended multiple times in the comments section. It is currently under going some big changes that the company says you can follow and keep up on what's happening. Some of that has caused them to get some more negative reviews as things have changed. People haven't wanted to see the change or it's caused more glitches to happen. But with how many good reviews I've seen, reviews that had even changed their score when they saw why things were changing and how quickly the developer seems to respond to all of these reviews, this seems like a game with a lot of promise that might be worth spending some time in. Kizuna AI Touch the Beat is a rhythm-based game based on Kizuna. So if you are a Kizuna fan or you you even know who they are, this might interest you a little more. With a four star rating, a lot of people are citing this as their typical rhythm game or a less good version of Beat Saber. Some of the reviews just getting straight up a little uh, creepy vibes. This is worth it for fans of it, not people who are trying to get in and get really close to some virtual character. Maybe that needs to be left to the uh, private rooms of VR chat, but this game is still rated E for everyone. It does eventually have purchase options where you can buy music packs that then will really up the price of this game. If you're looking at one of the music version packs, it's $35. But at least there's a free version to try out first and see if this is something that would interest you to then continue playing. One of the most highly rated games on our list today, Gods of Gravity has over a 4.5 star rating. It is considered a social arcade style real-time strategy game. You compete in a showdown as a deity, but unlike other deity simulators, this is actually a multiplayer experience for two to eight people. You're trying to eliminate your opponents. You're trying to take over the entire solar system with the command of your fleet. You can also team up with friends and go against bots, and there is built-in spatial voice chat. The game also does have a single-player campaign. A lot of extremely positive reviews, people saying you've got to try this, people saying that they can't believe that this game is free, and it's rated everyone 10 and up. Definitely one on this list that seems like it's worth checking out. Meta Horizon Worlds, if you haven't heard of it, is basically Meta's own version of Rec Room or VR chat, with all different kinds of user-created worlds, different games that you can play in, or just different social lobbies to hang out with. You can meet people from all over the world. Although recently they've started a creator program where creators who create worlds for them can actually make money off the worlds they create as people visit. It definitely still feels to me like it's behind where Rec Room or VR Chat currently are, but a lot of people are turning to it as they find lobbies more and more full of young people they don't want to spend their time with in the other popular social apps. Half and Half is another social VR game that has flown under the radar for a lot of people. There are multiplayer spaces where you can hang out with your friends and do all kinds of things from gliding through the clouds, swimming in the ocean, but probably the most exciting and well-known 
don't want is playing hide and seek with friends. You end up in a virtual environment where you are either a very tiny hider or a very large seeker with a slingshot trying to then find your friends who are hiding in these virtual spaces and catch them. With more balanced reviews and only 54% five star reviews, a lot of the reviews are still positive and say it is a fun experience, but that the game can get tired, old, or the mini games are too easy. I personally played this with a bunch of YouTubers and it's great for an afternoon of fun with friends, although not something that I personally went back to a lot after I got through all of the experiences together. Blacktop Hoops VR Basketball. A streetball inspired multiplayer VR basketball game. This allows you to stream together tricks, dunks, and play with people all around the world. They advertise this game was built to have the most realistic basketball mechanics alongside dynamic AI where they used actual motion capture animations from actual streetballers. With a nearly five star rating and over 5,500 ratings, this game actually has very few low ratings. With any free game, people do tend to rate them a little higher because they didn't have to pay for it, but countless reviews say that this game is fantastic, has great dynamics, but when you go into those multiplayer games, you might be really good or you might really stink when you play against actual other people. Punch Fit is a recent addition to the App Lab only coming out on August 16th of 2022. From developer The Strippers, although that doesn't seem to have anything to do with the actual game, Punch Fit is another one that is focused on fitness and activity. They advertise having over 50 workouts. It's primarily a boxing game. This game, interestingly, only has 88% five-star ratings, but with 10% four-star and only 2% three-star, it does have an extremely high rating from the people who have played it. Now, interestingly, compared to a multiplayer VR shooter, We Are One has you playing multiple players as one person in this shooter. You use time loops and strategy to create clones of yourself that then do the actions that you had set them up to do, and then you work side-by-side -side along them to beat the levels. This game is touted as an action game and a puzzle game meeting together in one. And it also has the benefits of no potential motion sickness being that it doesn't use any type of locomotion. Republic VR is a truly unique VR game, actually from the developers of Metal Gear Solid and Halo. In this game, you play a hacker who is hacked into a nation's surveillance system and you're trying to assist Hope, a woman trapped inside, helping her escape. This explains why your view only goes from surveillance camera to surveillance camera while you are guiding her through and helping hack other computers systems to get you through. A stealth action game does have strong language. Its rating has been dragged down by the fact that it had a glitch in it that wasn't letting people finish the game. This has been patched and supposedly works. I know personally when I tried it while I was live streaming it, I had glitches that stopped me from getting further in the game too. The game originally cost $9 on Steam back then, but has now gone completely free on Quest and on Steam. Anyone who is a fan of stealth and action games, especially with puzzle elements, should definitely take the time to check this game out. Hyper Dash is another game that started at $20 and has now gone free free to play. This VR multiplayer team-based shooter has about a 4.6 rating with nearly 2,000 ratings. With all different kinds of game modes from payload, domination, capture the flag, elimination, and more, there's all kinds of different things to do and the game looks like it has a real esports feel to it from the colors and the uniforms they've chosen. 80% of the ratings are 5 stars and it seems like the developer responds to every single one of them. Liminal is a unique gaming experience in VR in that it is a collection of all different kinds of experiences. Meditation to fighting killer bots, different caves, and space exploration. Liminal claims that it's applying research by neuroscientists and psychologists that is meant to induce and augment emotional and cognitive states. Now, this game has a four-star rating and is rated for everyone, with some of the reviews dragging down that rating because there is many free experiences people say that you can try in this game and enjoy, but eventually, if you run out of credits, you can't continue to earn them. You have to pay money to try some of the other experiences in it. The developer is responding that they are trying to find a way to balance that people can try more experiences without having to pay money at that point. But a lot of the reviews do cite that there is still tons to try out in the game without ever having to pay so that it might be worth it to try since it is free. Home After War is a room scale interactive VR experience that takes you to war-torn Fallujah after ISIS had been forced out of there. This tells you the story of one man and his family as they were returning home to find out that many homes had still been left to be trapped or bombs were in place. This is rated everyone 10 and up, but it does warn if you have PTSD or photosensitive epilepsy, this is probably not something to spend your time checking out. Reviews are very mixed from people who are understanding what they were walking into, realizing that this is a real life documentary of people who went through a terrible struggle or other people expecting this to be some kind of a video game shooter fun experience and then they gave it a bad rating because it was definitely not that. This looks to be a very powerful and moving experience that you may want to check out if you are interested in things like VR for change. If you become tired of playing Gorilla Tag, there are plenty of 
clones on Quest 2 App Lab that are similar to the game but with different elements and Capuchin is one of those. Another game with unique locomotion like Gorilla Tag. It's got a 4.1 rating with over 3,000 rating. It is a somewhat popular game although it is dragged down by one star ratings where they've had problems with glitches in the game, server problems, or even people losing the cosmetics that they have unlocked. Grab is a truly unique VR game. Not only is it a parkour game, but it is multiplayer and it has a level editor that allows you to build your own levels and then bring your friends into play. With a nearly five star rating and 87% five star ratings, people say this is absolutely a blast. The game advertises there's already over 100,000 community levels. You can play with up to 10 people. It's an active game with fun physics based controls. And for me personally, any game where you can make your own levels in the game and then play them or bring friends into play, I've always loved that. So bring that into VR and Grab looks absolutely amazing. If you've tried, I'd love to hear what you thought. Penguin Paradise was a game one of you actually suggested in the comments to add to one of our free games lists. At first glance, this game has kind of blocky aesthetics similar to Gorilla Tag, although this is more of a skiing type simulator and calls itself a multiplayer slip sliding adventure game for all ages. With a decent amount amount of five star ratings, 64%. There is still a lot of one star ratings too. Some of the lower ratings, of course, citing community members, toxic people there, and then other problems with glitches, people not getting their ice cubes that they earned. And a lot of the five star ratings definitely seeming like they may have come from a younger audience. Undead Quest is a very recent addition to the Quest store and currently has a free demo version out that you can check out. The game is described as a fun single player arcade game. We're using a bat and a ball and some spells to fight against hordes of undead creatures. Looking like your typical wave shooter type game, this game pits you up against all kinds of different undead creatures, but it does have cutscenes that actually show off the plot of the game. It's got about 70% or 69% five star ratings, but that is of very few ratings so far, only 13 ratings, and the one star says it just wouldn't work on the original quest. The developer actually has contacted us, personally said this is a game in development with a lot more to come, so this might be one to keep an eye on. V Speedway is a VR single player racing game that has time attack modes, free ride, and single races. But what makes this game really unique in that it's racing, you actually use a working wheel, handbrake, shifter, and even rear view mirrors to see the other players. There are online leaderboards where you can go to to try and beat your friends. And this game has over a four star rating with 61% five star reviews. People of course in the reviews are saying needs to add multiplayer, people mentioning that they would like to be able to choose cars, and of course that this is just a great start. This is compatible with B haptics so if you're one of the few people that has a b haptics vest this would be one where you can race and feel those car wrecks fish game was another game that was suggested to me in the comments to add to the free games list so make sure if you have other free games you haven't seen on one list let me know in the comments down below fish game says become fish with friends <laughs> basically looks like a simpler version of a rec room style game you are walking around in multiplayer social lobbies meeting new people and you are even able to build in these lobbies and play mini games their top two mini games they mention are their original ones that they made swords where you have three lives you're trying to kill all the other fish and boats where angry fishermen are trying to catch you with their fishing net. Now with 73% five star ratings and 16% one star ratings, the reviews definitely look like they may be marked by a lot of uh, younger reviews. One in the one star category says it's really amazing fun, but they wanted to write a review down in the one stars for no reason, but the game is amazing and you should try it. Poor developer. The developer did respond to that, of course, but a lot of people saying the hand locomotion that this offers is one of the best. It's not a gorilla tag rip off people even say. Brisk Square is currently in early access on App Lab and is free. This game looks very similar to Pistol Whip in that it propels you down a hallway and you fight enemies as they are propelled towards you. There's sword slashing, there's weapons, and even powers that have you push, pull, and crash objects with your other hand, not your sword hand, to collect points to reach the top of a worldwide leaderboard. This is an infinite run game so it does go on forever down this cyberpunk hallway and you're trying to reach your way to the very top of the leaderboard. With 726 ratings, 84% of them are five stars with mostly positive reviews of people saying the game is really cool it's awesome it's really fun and some giving less stars because they said that it says that it doesn't require internet connection but it apparently does to validate to the servers with that said and my love for pistol whip this game looks right up my alley so if you've tried it i'd love to hear about it for those of you who are big fans of card collecting games where you can play against your friends and build up your pack of cards cards and tankards may just be the free game you haven't checked out yet advertising itself as vr's first social collectible card game you can collect over 160 cards. They've got four factions, completely customizable decks, and cross-platform multiplayer, so there should be enough people whenever you walk into this. With 730 ratings, this has a 77% five-star, 
games. Reviews compare this game to a Yu-Gi-Oh mixed with Pokemon type game, although some of the less than positive reviews are saying that people get banned too easily, that moderators may be banning the wrong people. All something to consider if you're going to put your time into a game that you're going to try and build a big card deck. If you were to then lose access to that, that could really feel bad. From what I've heard from people who have played it, it is really good and is the best game still if you want to have a collectible card game in VR. So there it is, 50 free games you can play on your Quest 2. What are some other ones that I didn't mention that you'd love to see on this list? Maybe you'll see it when we reach 100. Let me know, but thanks for coming out and I will see you in another reality.